what was the kingdom of Arthur II? Was that the same kingdom, he, North Wales? Uh, well, it, I think uh, you probably got a copy, but uh, he was pronounced and proclaimed king of Glamorgan. It was now time for Alan and Barham to go in search of the grave of Arthur. They knew that there was a tradition of him and his queen being buried at Glastonbury in Somerset, but that, as they quickly discovered, was unlikely. Glastonbury Abbey in Somerset was founded by an English king in 941, and the first abbot was St Dunstan in 942. Now, if Arthur II dies in 579, then we're at least 450 years too late with Glastonbury and Somerset. There's another factor. Arthur is said to be buried in the great and ancient graveyard where multitudes of the great and illustrious of the British are buried. There is no great ancient graveyard at Glastonbury. It appears that Henry II had something to do with this promotion of the idea of Arthur in Somerset. So Henry II, in order to be king of Britain as such, wanted justification. Now if he could claim to be the heir, if only by sort of linked royal succession of some sort, or the fact that he was a king of England, if he could prove that Arthur was a king of England, in England, and he was then a later king of England, if Arthur ruled the whole of Britain, and so Henry II was entitled to rule the whole of Britain. Justification. And so it, it looks as if he prompted the, his cousin, the, uh, at Glastonbury, the abbot, to dig up Arthur at Glastonbury, and that would provide Arthur being out of Wales, away from Wales, and into England. Arthur's an ancient English-British king, and therefore Henry II is entitled to rule Wales, Scotland, and England. Very simple. If Arthur, King of Glamorgan, was not buried at Glastonbury, then where was his grave? Alan and Barham knew that the histories were the key and that they were pointing to a place called Caer Caradoc. There were other clues to its location, but find Caer Caradoc, they reasoned, and you find his grave. In King List 28, there is mention of a Glamorgan king called Arthuris, or Arthmau, a sixth generation descendant of Arthur I. You get a line of princes, you get a son of Arthur I, Tathal, then Tythrin the subtle, Tythvalt or Theodosius, Tudrig, Theodric, Myrig, Morris, and then Myrig's son, Arthur II. And so you've got two Arthurs very cleanly exhibited. These are not hidden. You find them clearly in the manuscript evidences that everybody else uses when they're writing about British history. So they're harder to miss than they are to find. Why is it then that we have all this sort of weird King Arthur industry and there's people get saying, oh, he's in yeah. Glastonbury uh, and somewhere, you know, in um, um, Cornwall and... Yeah, yeah. And they've mixed them all together. If it's, if it's so uh, in the records, why has no one else found them? Well, religious and political, you know, manoeuvring uh, for various, you know, reasons. What we're going to do, subsequent to this, is to go out into the field, as university people like to say. We're going out to show how to trace the grave of Arthur II. We know that King Tudrig, his grandfather, was an Uther Pendragon, but we also know that he's buried in Mathen Church, where he's been dug up twice, 1609 and 1881. But we've got an Dragon buried at a place called Caer Caradoc in the late 6th century. Now this is not an obscure reference. We've got 168, there were 167, but another one's been found a year ago, 168 copies of the Brutes of England, the manuscript handwritten. And they say, Uther Pendragon is buried at Caer Caradoc. It can't be the Uther Pendragon Tudor, he's at Mathen, and it's towards the end of the 6th century. So, to us it's logical that this is probably the Uther Pendragon Arthur. Similar information of an Uther Pendragon buried in the giant circle at Caer Caradoc exists in Matthew of Westminster. It's supplemented and it's reinforced by evidence in the Brute of Cecilio, in the Brute of Griffith Ab Arthur, and in several Dark Age, 6th century, poems in Wales. So we've got a massive evidence about this. 
What we're trying to say is, who is the Uther Pendragon? It clearly has to be Arthur. One of the problems has been is, how do you identify Kaya Karadok? Nobody appears to have bothered to find out. It hasn't been the subject of any research. The medieval said, well, there's a great circle at Kaya Karadok. Stonehenge is a great circle, that'll do, or Avery. Well, Stonehenge is not the place, neither is Avery. Kaya means castle, the castle of Karadok. Now we've got in mid Glamorgan a big fortress mountain. It's called Fortress Mountain, Mother the Guy. And on it we have some strange things. We've got St. Peter's Church in ruin. The thing about St. Peter's Church is that it appears in the ancient Welsh histories as a place where Merthyn Emrys meets the ambassadors of Bordigan at Kaya Karadok. We have Munwent to Milweir on this long mountain. Now Munwent to Milweir was built by Emrys Wedding around 470. He buried all the 363 major British nobles killed in the massacre with the Saxons at the peace conference. And he buried them in a giant circular monument known as the Grave Monuments of the Soldiers, Munwent to Milweir. It's still on the map. Right. Here on a 1980 Ordnance Survey map, you've got the Monument of Milweir, the Monument of the Soldiers of the Military, on Money de Gaia, Fortress Mountain. We're going there. Now, in 1983, a mere three years later, we've got an addition to the maps in the form of a motorway, but up on Money de Gaia, here, right, can you focus in? We've lost the Monument of Milweir. So we've gained a motorway and we've lost the most ancient and precious of the monuments. Now this is the monument of the soldiers. You're, this is it, here. This is it. And you can see the whole of the bloody kingdom from here. Just about. I don't, you can't see up the valleys, but you can see the whole bloody kingdom from this point. And it's said to be at Kaya Karadok. The big circle one. You can trace it out or walk around it. Those are dead bodies. Well, there's lumps and moans here. And this is the perimeter of it here. You can see the mountain, the perimeter of it, and it walks around here. Geoffrey of Monmouth said that the circular monument of the soldiers, built in about the 5th century AD, was Stonehenge, but this is clearly one of Geoffrey's many confusions. For Alan Wilson, then, this site, taken together with other evidence, pointed to the location of Kaya Karadok here in Maganug. So we've got St. Peter's Church at Kaya Karadok, and we've got Monmouth. Milweir at Kai Karadok. The highest part of this mountain, there's a grave mound still named Toin Karadok, the grave mound of Karadok. That's what it says. Close to St. Peter's Church and close to the ruins of ancient towers and walls of a castle, a Kaya, there is a giant ditch and mound, bolt shaped circle, let's call it, in the ground. So we have a giant circle at Kaya Karadok. We've got St. Peter's Church at Kaya Karadok. We've got the Manwant and Milweir at Kaya Karadok. And we've got Toin Karadok at Kaya Karadok. And we actually have a castle, a Kaya, or the ruins of it. All the names up here are evocative. The Ridge of the Soldiers, the Throne of the Knights, Outpost Forts, defending the mountain, and so on. This is the edge of it. You trace the mound there. There it is there. OK. Seen it? Most vital identification in Britain. We began with two accounts from the ancient records of the secret burial of a king in a mummified form. We now have ten accounts, most of them from the 6th century AD, contemporary with the death of King Arthur. These accounts actually name the mummified king who was wrapped in a leather bag and brought to this river for burial in a secret cave. His name was Arthur and he's so named in the manuscripts. In the life of Iltrid and in Nennius, there's a, a strange story of a burial. Uh, a, a ship arrives at a river which is named the Aweni River. Well, he's the one, the Aweni River. We've got a story of a ship coming in from the sea, and it bears the body of an embalmed or mummified man. It says oh, it arrives at the mouth of the Aweni River. Well, this is the Aweni River. It runs up in this area to the mountain. It's in the area of Guia. Well, this is Guia, Oga. Right? It mentions Luingarth and Lingarth. It means smooth ridges. Well, the smooth ridges are the great sand dunes that are there. And runners uh, used to use them, long distance runners, to train themselves up and down the sand dunes in modern okay. times. 
It says old St. Ilvin is sitting at a cave. Well, he comes to the boat. Two eminent people are with this corpse. They deliver the corpse, telling him the name of the person who is dead and wrapped up. And what happens is that Sinultid is sitting at his cave. And the ship arrives, and there are eminent people in this boat that puts out from it. And they've got the body of a dead man, who was really some big guy. They bring it to Iltid, swear him to secrecy, and he buries the corpse in the cave. Now, the cave exists. It's still there. Down there, my colleague will tell you about it. That's the woods down there. You see it on that hill? And in that woods down there, that's the Coydemusta woods where Arthur was put in the cave, first burial place. Go to the Coydemusta woods. There is a cave in a cliff. Here are the Coydemusta woods, the woods of mystery, where the cave of St. Ilted is. This is where Ilted sat and where he received the body in 579 AD. Uh, secret burial took place in the cave in these woods. Now there exists in Wales at least five folk tales describing Arthur as lying asleep in a cave or under a mountain with 1,000 of his soldiers awaiting the day when their help will be required by the inhabitants of Britain. But more importantly, according to the Welsh genealogies, St. Ilted and King Arthur our first cousins. So we've got an account of a secret burial in Glamorgan at the very time that King Arthur, who's the only senior member of the royal clan who goes missing, is recorded as being concealed in his burial. And we've got his first cousin doing the burying in this cave. The cave was actually sealed up until about, uh, it was 1886. A man from Cardiff went down there and he got a, a local quarryman and they put little bit, teeny bits of dynamite in and they, they blew the opening out because stalactite and stalactite had flowed down, not a lot of it, but it had sealed all the, all the stones together. So he blew it open and went in. And there is a grave pit inside the cave. Duck your head down. Yeah. Okay. Keep down. Come in here. Come on, duck down. Keep down here, I want it down here until I tell you. Right? Come on now. Come on, come on through. Keep your heads down. Ready? Right, you can come through another yard or two. Come through another yard or two. Now, here is the grave pit. You can see the squared off ends, square that end, square right on there, very, very straight and square this side. And another square in that end. It's about three and a half, four feet wide, three and a half, four feet deep. And right across the cave, about 11 feet long, over there. Now that's the grave pit, exactly as described in the life of Sinodid. The grave in the cave. It runs east to west, which is Christian fashion, east to west. Here we have something which is nothing short of miraculous, an amazing find. Oh. Two young men from the Cardian College, were, it's, a, it's a film college. Okay. Uh, they went along and, and they were filming in this cave, filming the oh. grave pit. Above the thing, they panned across the, the side of the wall of the cave. And it's not until you get back and you look at it and say, oh, there's writing there. And it's covered with stark mites, see? So again... It's very old. It's very old. So and what did it say? It's in the Welsh ancient British Colman alphabet, and it says this is the place of the beer of the highest ruler. And he's taken from that woods, and he's brought to Caer Caradoc, because two histories say that King Arthur is at Caer Caradoc. The One of the two accounts, one's in Ilted and one's in the uh, Marbles of Britain in Nennius, says how the body is later taken out to a church and placed near or in this church. Everything is pointing here, to this area. So the Uthapen dragon in the giant circle, because in the giant circle we find a grave mound. Uthapen dragon is in the giant circle at Kayak Manacle. Sinultid is the undertaker, does the burying. Sinultid is the first cousin of King Arthur, King Arthur II. Add to this another story. We have a story of visitors coming from Brittany to visit the cave of Arthur, the grave of Arthur. 
They land on the coast, which is a coast of cliffs. Well, from Cardiff to the Oweni is 35 miles of cliffs, steep ones. And they say, oh, there's a little inlet, a little dell, a little dingle, a valley, a tiny valley, very green, beautiful, a little stream running down it. They come ashore there. And on the one cliff on the one side is an ancient church, and the other is a fortress. On the one side we have Kenegwis, ancient church, and the other side we have the relics and ruins of a major fortress. Kenegwis is known to be the grave of King Kerry Longsword, who succeeded Caradoc I to fight the Romans around the year 51 to 80 AD. These people land at this place, they come inland, they go along Wooded Valley, which is still there between Lantrissand and Lanharam. They come to a long mountain. This is a long sausage-shaped mountain. There is a little valley let into the mountain. There is a little valley let into the mountain. A stream runs down it. And it's so steep, they have to get off their horses and lead them up the slope to get to the top, to the grave of Arthur. And you'll still see people doing that today when they ride their horses around this mountain. And they are smack on we reasoned where this church would be, because just up above, a straight line up the river above the woods, and there's the ruin of St. Peter's Church. So uh, one account then again says, your stone there was became a mystery. So we say, hey, there's a stone, you know, we got to look for this. So we started rooting about. This church had been abandoned about the uh, turn of the century, 1900-ish. Okay. So we got hold of the Church of Wales and we said, do you want to sell it? And they said, yes. So we bought it. So we now owned it so we could root about quite free from any hindrance. Mm. And we did find a stone. And what did the stone say? It's, it's actually, either it's nonsense or it's lousy Latin, it says Rex Artorius Philly Mabricki, which would be... King Arthur? Uh, yeah, but it should say Artorius Rex in good Latin. But we got a whole carved it, perhaps it was some soldier or idiot who didn't know what he's doing. So this is a stone, and it does have carved lettering on it. And you can make them out there. It runs down to here and here. Uh, Although this was found long before the excavation in 1990, Professor Talbot, the archaeologist, actually found the niche in the wall where the stone could have been. appears to have been. So there you go. Well, it's very similar in shape to the Magla Puma stone down at uh, Nevin. Uh, the lettering is pretty close to the lettering. It's the same as lettering on other 6th century stones. 